Hey guys, Jam here, and in today's video I'm going to be playing some Dark Oath to kind of maybe start the Norska themed Slaves to Darkness army I've been planning for a long time now. And with the new Dark Oath coming out I figured it's probably the perfect time to maybe start testing out some colour schemes and that because I always wanted some Marauders and stuff like that to be the kind of backup troops to my Slaves of Darkness but I didn't want to get the older kits so these new ones pretty much fit in perfectly. Now in order to do this test I'm going to be painting this uh, Dark Oath War Queen over here because I haven't had a chance to buy the new box that's recently come out, don't know if I will or not. But yeah, let's get painting. Alright, so first things first, this model's been sat on my shelf for a good few years now so I had to dust it off before I did anything else. And also I'm going to throw my wife under the bus here a little bit but she built this model and there might be one or two construction errors so I'll give you guys 10 points if you can spot them. I didn't really notice them at first until I primed the model but yeah it's pretty bad. Now that that is done and dusted, pun intended, I whipped out the old trusty airbrush to prime this bad boy and obviously you can use any rat rattle can or anything you want. Now I primed the entire model in black and then I gave it a nice zenithal with a light grey. Not really a necessary step, but it always kind of helps just see where shadows are and where things are a bit easier than just pure black. Sometimes I struggle to see stuff. Maybe that's my colorblind eyeballs, but who knows. Right, so on to actual paint now. Now I kind of paint this a bit in like a kind of weird order because usually if I'm batch painting, I'll just base coat the entire unit, every single part, then I'll do washes and so on and so forth. But because it's a one-off kind of character model, I just wanted to get certain sections done at a time it just felt more fun that way yeah first up i wanted to hit the cape so i got myself some corn red i'm not really breaking the boundaries with this model with some new color schemes because you know slave to dark has always got red capes but i just really like it so i'm gonna go for a nice dark red with corn red just slightly thin down and i'm just gonna base coat the entire cloak with this and once i got two three coats of that on there I just slap on a quick shade of Agrax Earthshade. Just making sure it doesn't kind of pull at the bottom of the cloak, you know, usual shade stuff. <laughs> now, like I said before, this is a bit all over the place with how I painted this one, but while I was waiting for the Agrax to dry, I thought I'd slap a quick coat of Rakarth Flesh on all the flesh. Now, we will be painting all the skin a different color later, but because Rakarth is a base paint, it just gives nice coverage to kind of start from. And secretly, Rakarth Fesh is probably one of my favorite GW colors. I don't know why, it just comes out of the pot really nice and it's just, it's very versatile. And once that was done, I went back to the cloak. Now the fun begins. Now I'm going to be doing a bit of glazing with this. And if you don't know what glazing is, I did a video on it a very long time ago. But I'm not exactly a, a painter or a painting tutorial kind of person. I don't think I'm that good, but if you want to go watch that, go check it out. But basically glazing is just getting really, really thin down paint and just kind of, well, glazing little transitions onto the model. So I went back to corn red with this, really, really watered it down. And I'm painting over quite a lot of the cape again, but I'm leaving in those deep kind of dark recess shades. So basically this will blend the darker agraxy kind of corn red into the normal corn red. So I'll do a few layers of this, let it dry, and I'll slowly work my way to the highest points of the cape. Like I said, every new layer of glazing I do, I just move further and further away from the deep shadows and more to the points. Now, I wasn't 100% sure about this recipe. I'm going for a kind of dark red burgundy kind of vibe. I don't know if it really pops quite enough, but it, the next paint I used was Was Daka Red. And I did the same thing again. I just went back to glazing. But like I said before, I'm going more on the peaks of the cape, really focusing on where the light would hit it the most. So we'll get this nice transition from the really dark and then it'll go a little bit lighter to a little bit lighter and so forth. But once I got all the glazing kind of done to a certain point, I was like, you know what, having a smooth cape makes no sense because one, this is a chaos model, the little rough ragtag kind of tribal people, the cape's all ripped up and stuff as well. So I wanted to put some texture into this. So I went back to my Wazdaka Red and I just gently start adding lots of scrapes and cuts and stuff like that just to add a clothy kind of rough texture to it all. But still kind of focusing on the main highest folds. I'm not going into the deep shaded areas with this. 
And then for the final highlight, I went to Squig Orange. And I'm really focusing on just the really highest points on this one. But I'm not doing a smooth edge like highlight or anything like that. I'm going to do a lot of stippling and little scrapes and stuff exactly the same as before. Adding a lot of texture and roughness to this cape. And while I'm putting in this texture, I also do focus a lot more on the bottom of the cape. I put a lot more color and scratches in there because obviously that would be where it was dragging across the ground and all that kind of stuff. So it just looked right to me. And also on that note, I forgot to mention before, it's not only the cape I'm doing like this, I'm also doing the little kind of loincloth-y thing as well around the waist. And then you have it, the cape's done. It's got that kind of smooth glazy transition to it but with the texture added on top and I think it turned out pretty well. Now next up probably the most important part of this model and it's the skin because she's mostly skin really and like I said before I'm going to be going over all the skin again with Kislev Flesh. So nicely thinned it down I'm just going to go through this entire model giving it like maybe two coats just to give it a proper little base. And I know Dark Oath, probably one of the most intimidating things of starting this army. Well, one, they've got a lot of detail anyway, but you're painting a lot of skin. So it could be a good challenge if you want to kind of get better at painting to pick up this army or at least a few of their models. Because there's a lot of different skin tones you can do and I think it'll be quite fun. But anyway, next step, easy peasy, chuck on some Reichlin flesh shade all over the skin and wait for that to dry. And to be perfectly honest, if you're doing like a horde of dark earth dudes you could probably do this skin tone base and a wash maybe just a quick little highlight and you're pretty much done there really if you want to just get through it quicker but for me personally with this particular character because i mean she's the war queen of the dark earth i'm going to put a little bit more extra de detail and time into her so the next step is i'm going back to kids left flesh and i'm once again going to be glazing over the higher points of the model. So obviously leaving that previous shading where it's appropriate to leave it and just kind of cleaning up the wash and making a nice smooth transition from the shadows to the normal flesh color. Now onto the final step of the skin and that's to slap on some flayed one flesh. Now this will be for the really tippy top highlights of the skin. So the nose, the eyebrows, the cheekbones, all that kind of stuff. Obviously some of the scars will get a bit of this as well. And I do a bit of a light glazing on top of her right leg because it's quite a large chunk of flesh there. That's kind of the main part you see. And I wanted it to look a little bit more smooth, a bit more of a transition there. Now that's the skin pretty much done. But I felt like I needed one extra detail. And around the scars, I just got a very, very light amount of Caribou Crimson wash. And just lightly ran it around the scars just to give that a bit more of a kind of reddish soul feeling to it. And I think that really helped the skin look a little bit more natural and just pop a bit more. Now onto her hair. Now I think the Games Workshop version of this, I think she might have like an orange hair or something like that. And to be honest, I think maybe like a blonde or an orange or a red probably would have worked really well, but I decided to go for a brown. So I'm gonna base coat her hair with Rhinox Hide. Then I'm gonna quickly wash the entire hair area with Agrax Earthshade. Again, probably not a necessary step because it's already quite dark, so you can just go straight in with the highlights. But like I said before, I'm adding a bit more effort into this. Now, as you've probably predicted at this point, I'm going to go back to Rhinox Hide. I'm going to paint over all the hair again, but obviously leaving the deepest recesses where the shade's gone. Then I went to Doom Bull Brown to start painting a few more highlights into the hair. Now for the final highlight, just focusing on the kind of tippy top points of the hair, I'm going for Tusk or Fur. Don't really know why I'm going into depth of the hair color, because if you got this army, you'd probably be painting like five, six, maybe ten different hair colors anyway. Now next up was all the fur. And I went for a gray on this one, so I'm starting with Mechanica Standard Gray, just painting the entire fur with this. And the reason is because I think the cape's kind of like a brownish, like dark red. You know, lots of skin tones, leathers, all that kind of stuff. I wanted to go for something a bit more neutral, I guess. I mean, a white probably would have worked better, but went for a gray. And I'll also be using the same gray recipe for any like rune stones and stuff like that on this model as well. Then, obviously, got to get some null oil out. So I just washed all the fur in that and the rune stones. And again, while I was waiting for the wash to dry, I didn't want to waste any time. 
So I went ahead and blocked in everything that needed to be black. So I painted the boots, any sort of leather straps, and I also did all the metallics because painting over black with metallics is far easier than going over a white. And that's what the model looks like so far. So we've got all our blacks there, blocking all the metallics and everything like that. And now it's back to highlighting the fur. Now, as you can see on the screen, I'll be going through from Dawnstone to Administratum Grey. And I'll just be edge highlighting the strands of hair, really. So like I said, I'm going to use Dawnstone to edge highlight most of the fur. And then I'll be coming in with Administratum Grey and just doing the really tippy top edge highlights with this. Now, like I said before, maybe a white fur would have looked better. So I could always come in with a lighter grey or even a white to highlight as well. But now that all the fur is done, I'm going to be using the same grey recipe. So going from Mechanicus Santa Grey to Dawnstone to Administratum Grey on all the black parts of so the boots, for example here. But as you can see on the screen right now, with the Mechanica Standard Grey, I did a kind of your usual edge highlights. I just did edges everywhere, nice smooth lines, all that kind of stuff. But like I said before, I wanted to get texture into this model. So when I came to the Dawnstone, I'm going to use a bit more of like a stipply highlight around the edges. I'm going to be adding a lot of scratches and nicks and just, like I said, stippling it instead of doing straight smooth lines. Given that illusion of that worn leather these boots have been stomping around for a while. Then again, the same thing with Administratum Grey, but I'm going to be focusing just on the corners and the edges and stuff like that, just so those edges pop a little bit more. And yeah, that's a really nice, quick and easy way to highlight things, but it also gives, once again, texture. But onto the bone. So now for this, I'm going to base coat everything that I want to have well, I want it to be bone in Zandri dust. So that's going to be the horns on the head, that little weird skull shoulder pauldron thing. And she's also got skulls on her shins for some reason, but they look cool. Then all I'm going to do is wash that with Seraphim Sepia. And if it hasn't, <laughs> and if you haven't guessed that at this point, I'm going to go back in with Zandri dust once that's dry to kind of layer in some of the colors on the highlighty points and leave in the shading in there, like I've done with pretty much everything so far. Then I'm going to be coming in with Yushabti Bone, doing a thicker, wider highlight, but obviously smaller than the Zandri Dust one. And once that's done, I come in with Screaming Skull just to get the really tippy top points of the bow. For example, on the horns on her head, with the Screaming Skull, I'm just kind of doing little dots around the ridges of the bow, just so those edge corners just pop out. Now with bone you can actually do a lot of different tones and colors and I could have done some maybe glazing transitions from like a dark to a light bone but I'm just going to keep it relatively simple with this one. Now next up I'm going to be doing all the leather straps and the cloth around her wrist and stuff like that and I'm going to be using Mournfang brown for this. Now again I think with everything kind of already being kind of reddish and brownish maybe a lighter khaki kind of brown or something like that would have looked better but I think it turned out right. So the next step, obviously, once you've got your coats of Mournfang brown down, is to Agrax Earthshade the lot. Now onto one of my least favorite things to do when it comes to painting any miniature, and that's the wrapping around weapons, because they've always got a lot of creases and folds in close proximity, and they're, they're usually kind of annoying to get to, but also there's just so many of them to try and get a nice highlight. So you're going to want a nice pointy brush for this. And I'll be coming in with Scrag Brown to do a kind of edge highlight all around the highest points with this. Now this is definitely something you're going to take your time with because it is worth it when all those little bits are perfectly highlighted. Now lastly for all the leathery bits, I'm going to be using Death Claw Brown. And I'll just be edge highlighting the really highest points of the model, the parts that will hit the sunshine or light or whatever it is the most. So I won't be highlighting underneath the weapon wrap, just on the top. And we're almost there, but now before I go on to metallics, because I'm going to have to change my water and all that kind of stuff, I wanted to attempt to paint the eyeballs in. Now this is something I usually just kind of leave out because it's too much hassle. But I thought, you know what, once again, this is a leader for my army, I'm going to try. But while I was trying to work up the courage to do little pupils on the eyeballs, I decided to paint the tongue. So I'm going to go in with a bit of screamer pink and just gently paint the tongue in. But then to give this a little bit of a highlight, I go in with a bit of pink horror and just kind of highlight the 
front part of the tongue and I'll call it quits there. Now when it comes to the metallics, for the silver bits at least, I'll be using lead belcher. And to be honest I'm not going to go super light with this either because when it comes to my more Chaos Knight side of the Safe to Darkness army, I think I want their armor to be a really really dark blackish kind of steel so I'm going to try and keep that vibe with this model. And then when it comes to the more kind of goldish looking metallics I'm going for Warplock Bronze as my base color here. And that'll be going around the trim around the shield, face plate on her belt, the dagger, some bits on the axe, all that kind of stuff. Once the metallics all done I wash the silvers with non oil and the golds with Agrax Earthshade. And once that's dry I come in with a highlight slash layer of brass scorpion on all the goldish brass colors and like I said I'm doing quite a thickish highlight with this one and lastly I'm coming in with a very fine highlight of rune lord brass and that's all the brassy metallics done and then back to the silvers because like I said I want to keep this quite dark I'm going back to lead belcher and I'm using that to do an edge highlight and particularly with the axe, the bladey part, I kind of do a little bit of scratches and nicks, like really thin lines there just so it looks a bit more worn. And to be honest, this silver is probably not even dark enough for what I want, but I think it's alright for this particular model. Now next up, for a thinner highlight, I'm going to be using Iron Breaker. Now emphasis on thinner, I should have gone thinner on this one, but I think some sections looked a bit too thick, maybe a bit too stark. But yeah, I just hit the tippy top edge highlights with this just to give that kind of battered worn steel vibe to everything. Then once all that was done I decided you know what I'm gonna just try and do this black pupil because I know I'm gonna mess it up and I did it off camera because once again it's so hard to focus on and I kind of got it right the first time if you look really close the eyeballs are slightly wonky but I've got a rule with eyes if it looks good enough just leave it because if you try to go back and forth to fix it up it just ends up far worse. Now for one of the final steps and one of the more fun bits because this is something I've never really done before and I wanted to create kind of demonic glowing runes. I mean after all she's the war queen of a chaos warband so it kind of felt right. So I got my white, any white will do and I watered it down to almost like a wash consistency just so it flows into all those runes a lot easier and I just kind of dabbed it in there. Now you don't have to be too clean, any overspill and stuff like that will just help the kind of glowing effect. In fact I actually paint around the runes a bit. Now on the weapon I think I went a bit too over the top, later I will kind of fix it up going back with some lead belcher just to lower that kind of glow down a bit. Once that was all done and dry I got Troll Slayer Orange and again I kind of watered it down quite a lot, not really a wash consistency but you want it kind of transparent and flowing nicely. And I just put that over all the white bits and the runes just kind of flowing in there and it starts to create this nice vibrant orange glow. And like I said I'm painting around the rune as well so it kind of looks like the light's glowing out. But for the next step I'm going to be going to Fire Dragon Bright. And again I'll be mixing this to a kind of almost shade like consistency but this I'm focusing just inside the runes. I don't want to go too much around them. So it kind of goes from a darker light on the outside and it slowly starts to get hotter and brighter in the center of the room. Now saying that once I did this it just wasn't poppy enough. So I went back to my white again, watered it down even more and once again just kind of deposited that white in the centers of the runes just so like I said the runes look like they're hotter and they're just brighter than the rest and I think it turned out pretty well. And because of the lighting you won't be able to see it that well here but once I go to the twirly showcase at the end of the video you'll see it a lot better. Now before we get to that the last thing to do is the basing. Now obviously this is probably not that important to you depending on what you're doing but I'm going for the classic snowy tundra kind of vibe because I want my army to kind of be themed on Norska so I kind of want that snowy chaos wastes vibe to it. Now to try and prevent this video from running on for any longer I'll quickly run through it. So I paint the entire base with Dawnstone so I want that kind of lighter grey going on. But I've also left myself a bit of a gap in all this sand because I, I'm experimenting with maybe doing some ice patches in the army when I get around to it. So for this I got Incubi Darkness, Thunderhawk Blue and Frisian Grey out. Then I slapped the Incubi Darkness on the entire patch where I want the ice to be. Now while the paint was still wet 
I quickly got my Thunderhawk blue and I did it on the outer ring of it, but quite a thicker line around and kind of mushed it and blended it all together. And then while once again, still wet, I got my Fenrisian gray out and I dabbed this all around the final edges of where the ice will be. And again, just kind of wet blending it all together. Now this will kind of show that the center of the ice is the darkest, deepest where like the water is, well, the deepest really. And to be honest, on such a small model, it's not that noticeable, especially with me just doing a small patch. But once again, this whole model is kind of a, a trial to a project that I want to do in the future. Now, as good as it looks to have a really bright, icy blue kind of base, it's not really realistic, I guess. And also kind of, for me personally, I think it looks amazing, but it kind of dis distracts the eye from the actual model. So I'll be washing this entire base with Colia Green Shade. So it's kind of like a greenish blue tinge. I feel like it gives me a far more natural kind of earthy, icy kind of vibe. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it does to me. Then once that's done, I'll be dry brushing the entire base, but I'll be going from Dawnstone all over the base, kind of avoiding the icy patch there. Then I'll be coming in with Administrarum Grey dry brushing, but kind of keeping it to the higher points and I didn't feel like maybe it was lighter or cold enough, so then I came in with Celestra Grey as well. And that'll be an even smaller dry brush just on the rock and kind of high points. Now this next part's not exactly necessary, but a little cool little tip to get a bit more of a snowy vibe to your bases is to actually dry brush a little bit of white in some areas to kind of fill out the snow texture we'll put in later. But now back to the ice patch. So for this, I whip out my handy dandy Green Stuff World UV resin. Pretty sure you can get UV resin from anywhere really, but this is the bottle that I have. So I just dab this in that kind of icy little patch there. I hit it with my UV light until it sets. Then the final step to make it look a little bit more realistic, like I said, on this small patch, it doesn't show up much, but you want to get your hobby knife and just kind of put loads of scratches into the ice because it looks, well, more realistic that way. Now last but certainly not least, it's the snow. Now you can get all kinds of snow textures and stuff like that you can use, but I'm using Valhalla Blizzard from GW because it's just simple, easy, and it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to be going quite thick with this because like I said before, I want that kind of snowy chaos wasteland tundra vibe to it. So it makes sense for it to be quite thick. But once that's done, the entire model's done. All it's left to do is paint the rim of the base. Now here's a question for you guys. I did paint the face black in the end, but I was kind of thinking of maybe doing it Dawnstone or some sort of gray. I usually go for black, but I don't know. Would gray look better on this model? Let me know in the comments below as well. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents, in all her war queeny glory, I guess. And gotta say, after painting this model, I had a lot of fun, and it's definitely made me crave to have some more Dark Oath. Almost kind of want to go full Dark Oath now. So, yeah, really, really fun model to paint. I love painting more natural, more organic stuff. There's uh, you know, a lot of skin, fur, cloaks, and I've painted a lot of texture, like I said before in the video. And, um,. Yeah, I just had a lot of fun with this one. Like I said, it's recently I've been like rushing a lot of projects just to get it done. Whereas this one, I added that extra bit of detail and extra little bit of highlights in it. It felt good to actually put a bit of effort into something for a change. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed it, guys. And I uh, think I'm going to have to do some more. But as always, you know the drill with YouTube. Do the whole like, subscribe. I've got a Patreon account with some perks, a YouTube membership. All that really helps me keep my bits box full so I can keep on doing what I'm doing, really. But yeah, comment below what you think of this model. What do you think of Dark Oath in general? And lastly, would you like to see me actually do a full-on video doing my Norska themed Slave to Darkest army? That's something that's been on my list for a long time and I, I think I'd love to do it. So let me know below and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.